know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. is about New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson's press conference with press release announcing his Billy the Kid case. The information is from my book, Cracking the Billy the Kid Case Hoax. The strange plot to exhume Billy the Kid, convict Sheriff Pat Garrett of murder, and become President of the United States. On June 10th, 2003, Governor Bill Richardson held a press conference in the Santa Fe Capitol Building's cabinet room with issued press release for his Billy the Kid case hoax. That was five days after he'd splashed its announcement to the world in a front page New York Times article of June 5th titled, 122 Years Later, Lawmen Are Still Chasing Billy the Kid. The name Billy the Kid grabbed attention, but what should be noted is lawmen. Richardson's hoax was conducted by colluding taxpayer-funded officials and entities. The hoax intended to fake DNA results after his complicit lawmen exhumed pretended remains of Billy and his mother and declared they proved that imposter Brushy Bill Roberts was Billy the Kid. Then Richardson would posthumously pardon Brushy for his long and law-abiding life. At Richardson's press conference were his key hoaxers, Lincoln County Sheriff Tom Sullivan, his deputy Steve Cedarwall, the Baca County Sheriff Gary Graves, the attorney to exhume the mother, Sherry Tippett, and University of New Mexico teacher Paul Hutton, appointed by Richardson as official historian. Richardson announced that a real murder investigation had been opened in the Lincoln County Sheriff's Department against Pat Garrett, filed as case number 2003-274 for killing an innocent victim instead of Billy the Kid. It would use DNA matching to establish whether he should pardon Billy the Kid. That needed translating to reveal it as a plot to back Brushy Bill, since DNA matching had nothing to do with real Billy's pardon. Richardson also hid that the graves of Billy and his mother were just tourist markers lacking valid remains for DNA. The scheme was to claim that the mother's DNA didn't match buried Billy's DNA, so Brushy's fictional innocent victim, Billy Barlow, murdered by Pat Garrett, was actually in Billy's grave. The mother's made-up DNA would then be matched with exhumed Brushy to claim he was her son, Billy the Kid. Hidden also was that Brushy had denied that she'd been his mother, so DNA would prove nothing. Most importantly, there was no historical doubt that Pat Garrett killed Billy Bonney on July 14, 1881, so there was no need for the investigation. Richardson's press release implicates him as the hoax's instigator, names principal hoaxers, 
and admits its taxpayer funding as, quote, State of New Mexico support. The press release's contact person is given as Richardson's spokesperson, Billy Sparks. On screen is Governor Bill Richardson's June 10th, 2003 press release from Santa Fe. It was titled, Governor Bill Richardson Announces State Support of Billy the Kid Investigation. Excerpted with my added commentary, it stated, Governor Bill Richardson today outlined how the state of New Mexico will support the investigation efforts to investigate the life and death of Billy the Kid. Governor Richardson delivered the following remarks during a news conference today in the state capitol. This is an important day in the history of New Mexico and the American West. I am announcing my support and the support of the state of New Mexico for the investigation into the life and death of Henry McCarty, also known as William Bonney. Two millions around the world, he was called Billy the Kid. His life, though ended at the age of 21, is part of what makes New Mexico and American West unique. My goal is to shed new light on old history. Note that this pretended new light is the Brushy Bill hoax. I am pleased to be joined here by Lincoln County Sheriff Tom Sullivan, Capitan Mayor Steve Cedarwell, Note that he'd also been deputized for the case. Durbaco County Sheriff Gary Graves, misspelled Graves. Grand County Attorney Sherry Tippett, University of New Mexico History Professor Dr. Paul Hutton, and State Police Major Tom Branch. Let me tell you how this all came about. Last month, I was contacted by Lincoln County Sheriff Tom Sullivan and Capitan Mayor Steve Cedarwall to support reopening the case. Case number 2003-274 seeks to answer key questions that have lingered for over 120 years surrounding the life and the death of Billy the Kid. Note this segue into the hoax's murder case against Pat Garrett, which is just Brushy Bill's fiction. In reality, there's no question about whether Billy the Kid was actually killed. Richardson continued, This episode in the history of New Mexico and the history of the Old West is both fact and legend and continues to stir the imagination and interest of people all over the world. By utilizing modern forensic DNA and crime scene techniques, the goal of the investigation is to get to the truth. No, it's selling the hoax as modern forensics. In the process, the reputation of Pat Garrett hangs in the balance. The question is, did Sheriff Garrett kill Billy the Kid at Fort Sumner, New Mexico on July 14, 1881? No, that he did. This is Brushy Bill hoaxing. This investigation will also seek to shed new light on the events surrounding the escape of Billy the Kid from the Lincoln County Jail on April 28, 1881. The shooting of deputies J.W. Bell and Bob Ollinger by Billy the Kid has never been officially investigated. Where did Billy get his gun 
and what really happened. Note that this proves that Richardson backed this fake deputy killing sub-investigation by Sullivan and Cedarwall, making up Pat Garrett as Billy's jailbreak accomplice. Richardson continued, oh, I have contacted the National Labs, Los Alamos, and Sandia, and have been assured that they will volunteer their support in this effort. Los Alamos Lab can assist by providing ground penetrating radar, DNA expertise, and technical forensic assistance. Sandia Labs will allow their experts to volunteer their time to help us uncover the facts. Note that this is hoaxing. Richardson is hiding that the location of Billy's remains is uncertain. Ground penetrating radar can't identify them. And random digging up of graves is illegal. And a 1962 test case had already blocked exhumation of Billy at the tourist marker site as potentially disturbing remains of Charlie Bowdry and Tom O'Falliard. Obvious also is Richardson's avoidance of actual historical experts since they would have ended his charade. The state police will help supervise the investigation and crime scene analysis of the evidence uncovered. Note that there was no crime scene to investigate or evidence to gather. Richardson continued, I have also asked University of New Mexico professor of history and executive director of the Western History Association, Dr. Paul Hutton, to serve as our historical advisor. Dr. Hutton has served as president of the Western Writers of America and has won several national honors for his works on Western history. Note that no major Billy the Kid historian was willing to participate. Richardson continued, I intend to hold hearings at Fort Sumner, Lincoln, Silver City, and Messiah. I will appoint a defense counsel and a prosecutor to present the evidence. Note that this was never done. As governor, I will examine the events surrounding the alleged offer of a pardon to Billy the Kid by former New Mexico Governor Lou Wallace. I will evaluate the evidence uncovered and make a decision. Note that his investigation has nothing to do with the pardon except for the brushy bill hoax claiming he survived and deserved one for a long and law-abiding life. Richardson continued, if we can go to the truth, we will. I have total confidence in the team you see here today to conduct a professional, honest, and exhaustive investigation of the facts and report back to me and to the rest of the world what really happened here in New Mexico. Note that this is lying. For benefits to our state and to the history of the West far outweigh any cost we may incur. I expect the actual cost to be nominal. Note that the hoax cost a fortune in taxpayer money. A half million dollars alone was spent paying defense lawyers to stonewall my open records litigation and hide the lawmen's faked DNA records. Richardson continued, Just since this investigation was announced, it has sparked news articles about New Mexico and Lincoln County from New York to London to India. Getting to the truth is our goal, but if this increases interest and tourism 
in our state, I couldn't be happier. Note that giving New Mexico's Old West history to Texas doesn't help New Mexico's tourism. And Richardson squandered the chance to back legitimate investigation of Lou Wallace's pardon offered to Billy Bonney, which would have justified a pardon that would have really benefited the history and tourism in New Mexico. On June 11, 2003, the day after his press conference and press release, the Albuquerque Journal, New Mexico's biggest newspaper, and Richardson's mouthpiece throughout the Billy the Kid case hoax, had a front page article by an Anthony Della Flora titled, State Not Kidding Around, Governor Won't Mind If Probe of the Notorious 19th Century New Mexico Outlaw Boosts Tourism. It touted tourism benefits of his hoax designed to destroy that history and its sites. A photo from the press conference showed a blow-up of Billy the Kid's tintype with posing hoaxers, Sheriff Tom Sullivan and Deputy Steve Cedarwall dressed like cowboys. Other hoaxers present were DeBaca County Sheriff Gary Graves and Richardson's official historian for the case, University of New Mexico history teacher Paul Hutton. Reporter Della Flora left out Silver City attorney Sherry Tippett, who in four months would try to dig up Billy's mother. Della Flora praised Richardson for getting publicity, quote, around the world and, quote, separating fact from fantasy as to whether Pat Garrett shot the right man or had been complicit in the kid's escape, as, quote, some history buffs have alleged. Omitted was that those so-called history buffs were just Richardson's hoaxers. The article ended with Richardson's non sequitur that the investigation could result in the pardon of Billy the Kid. Excerpted with my commentary, this is the Albuquerque Journal article from Santa Fe. It introduced the Billy the Kid case hoax to New Mexicans. Reporter Della Flora wrote, With lawmen on his side, Governor Bill Richardson announced Tuesday he was throwing the weight of the state behind an investigation of New Mexico's most notorious outlaw, Billy the Kid. Richardson said he hoped that nearly 122 years after the kid's purported death, investigators and historians could separate fact from fantasy. He also acknowledged the probe could be a boon to tourism. My goal is to get the truth about the legend of Billy the Kid, Richardson said during a news conference in the packed cabinet room of the governor's office. I know this is good publicity for the state, and I make no bones about improving our image around the world with this investigation, Richardson said. The investigation likely will include DNA testing using samples from Catherine Antrim, the woman believed to be the mother of the kid, born Henry McCarty and later known as William Bonney. Her remains are believed to be in a grave in Silver City. University of New Mexico history professor Paul Hutton, executive director of the Western History Association, also will aid in the investigation. Note that the next year, in 2004, Hutton made a fake TV documentary backing the hoax. The probe could take a year, Richardson said. Note that Richardson wasn't expecting opposition. Although most believe that the kid's remains are buried in DeBaca County in Fort Sumner, where Sheriff Pat Garrett supposedly shot the outlaw on July 14, 1881, questions have been raised over the years. 
DNA testing may not be able to prove Billy the Kid is buried there, but it could eliminate two other claimants, Brushy Bill Roberts of Heiko, Texas, and John Miller of Prescott, Arizona, purporting to be Billy the Kid. Note this fakery. There's no valid DNA of Billy to match with Brushy or John Miller, both of whom can be eliminated just by Brushy being under two at Billy's killing and Miller 10 years too old and neither knowing the history. Delaflora continued, that would help to answer the question of whether Garrett shot the right man or actually may have been complicit in the kid's escape, as some history buffs have alleged. The latest twist on the Billy saga occurred when Lincoln County Sheriff Tom Sullivan and Capitan Mayor Steve Cedarval, also a reserve officer, note that he was deputized by Sullivan, decided in April to launch their own probe into the kid's bloody escape from the Lincoln County Courthouse in 1881. The escape left two lawmen dead, deputies J.W. Bell and Bob Ollinger. Sullivan said it was a visit to Heiko, where Brushy Bill is celebrated as the real Billy the Kid that prompted him to open the investigation. He said Heiko's claim is contrary to New Mexico's history. Sullivan said Garrett's face serves as a proud symbol of the Lincoln County Sheriff's Office, and he would like to remove the cloud over the famous lawman's name. Note that filing a murder case against someone like Garrett isn't done to prove they're innocent. Della Flora continued. Cedarwa said he thought it was proper to look into the deaths of fellow lawmen, Bell and Ollinger. The killings were never officially investigated. No one witnessed the kid shooting Bell, and there are different stories on how he acquired the lethal weapon, including one version that says an accomplice left a gun in the outhouse for him. Sullivan believes a bullet or fragments of it from the bell shooting may still be embedded in the wall of the courthouse and could prove whether Bell was killed by his own weapon or another. Note that this fakery is an early version of the hoax's deputy killing sub-investigation. In reality, it had no evidence. Neither Billy's escape gun nor Bell's gun are known. Later, this sub-investigation was switched to faking Garrett as Billy's jailbreak accomplice, then switched again to pretending Bell's blood was found on the courthouse's second floor, making Garrett a liar by saying Bell was shot on the stairs, so he also lied about his Fort Sumner victim. Della Flora continued, Richardson said the investigation could result in the pardon of Billy the Kid for the killing of Brady and others before the courthouse escape. In 1878, it was 1879, then Governor Lou Wallace had wanted to bring order to Lincoln County and made a deal with the kid in Lincoln to pardon him if he would testify to what he knew about the Lincoln County War. Note that this is wrong. The bargain was Billy's testifying against murderers of Houston Chapman. This actually quotes Brushy's made-up pardon bargain. Della Flora continued, The outlaw testified, but a district attorney refused Wallace's request to drop the charges, and Billy the Kid escaped. Note that this garbles another of Brushy's fictions about being jailed by the district attorney. 
and it was Wallace himself who refused the pardon. Della Flora continued, Rashi Bill at 92 came to New Mexico in 1950 claiming to be the kid and asking that his pardon be given. Note that Brushy's birth date of August 26, 1879, was known since 1987. He was under two at Billy's killing and was actually 71 at his 1950 pardon hearing. Delaflora continued, Then Governor Thomas Mabry rejected the claim and the petition for a pardon. Note that omitted is that Mabry declared Brushy an imposter. Delaflora continued, Billy can't be killed, Hutton said wryly. He's the outlaw of our dreams. Hutton was part of a 1990 investigation by the Lincoln County Heritage Trust that used computers to compare the one known photo image of Bonnie with those of Ollie Brushy Bill Roberts, a Heiko, Texas man who claimed to be Billy the Kid. That investigation determined that Roberts' claim was false. Note that opportunistic Hutton nevertheless backed Brushy for the hoax and later wrote and co-produced a 2004 History Channel fake documentary backing the hoaxers. Della Flora continued, Richardson maintains that he would pardon Billy only if a convincing amount of evidence points in that direction. Note that there was nothing in the investigation for real Billy's pardon. It was a brushy hoax rerun. Richardson's intent was to use fake DNA matchings to claim Brushy was surviving Billy the Kid and deserve the pardon for his long and law-abiding life. Della Flora continued, However, even if the kid might have been owed a pardon by Wallace, there is a little chance that the outlaw will be cleared of the subsequent killings of deputies James Bell and Bob Ollinger during his escape from the Lincoln County Courthouse. Hutton said there's no evidence that someone other than Bonnie killed the deputies. The real question is, who helped him, said Hutton. Note that Hutton is mouthing the Billy the Kid case hoaxes deputy killing sub-investigation by lawmen Sullivan and Cedarwall. Hutton, in his 2004 TV documentary, Backing the Hoax, parroted that the helper was Pat Garrett, a monster who aided murdering his own deputies by giving Billy the escape revolver and later murdered Brushy's Bill's friend to help Brushy as Billy escape in Fort Sumner. Take home from Governor Bill Richardson's announcements is his certainty that his Billy the Kid case hoax gobbledygook about DNA, law enforcement, murder investigating, and pardoning would pass as a legitimate investigation. The next talk covers the Billy the Kid case hoax as first introduced by its participating Lincoln County Sheriff's Department lawmen.